Hello Internet. Today I make a time travel with you back to the year 2016 to solve a significant problem for me. Because looking at all those graph neural networks, I ask myself, when did it start it and what was the problem that GCN came into existence? Why did they emerge? What was it? And if you want to find out about an event that happened five years ago, welcome. Let's start and let's dive right in. You see here on the left side a presentation from Thomas Kipf, and I leave you the link in the description of this video, tkipf github io, where he gives a presentation on the deep learning on graph structured data. And as you're already familiar with it, or even if you're a newcomer to graph GCNs, uh, we have a graph where we have an information encoded in the topological structure of the data. Between our nodes, we have edges, and we have within the nodes, we have some feature vectors that contain information. But as you can see, unlike a grid structure, for example, if you analyze a picture, or unlike a linear sequence, when we have NLP, the natural language spoken with a sequence of words, we have here two encoded information. We have a structural part and we have node specific information. And the way you map this to a mathematical object is very easy. You have a graph, you can describe the graph by the, the link structure if you want. And this is done normally in an adjacency matrix where you have your nodes A, B, C, D, E on both axes. And whenever there is an existing link with a certain strength, but let's say just the link for the beginning, you have zero and ones. Now, the very first time I thought, why, why, why did GCN happen? And I think it's so beautiful that here there is exactly by one of the author of the paper here on the right side, why he came to develop this model. And following his presentation, he said, okay, take the naive approach. How would you do it? You take the adjacency matrix where you have all the link information encoded and the feature matrix of all the information stored in all the nodes let's say as features of a node. And you have two matrix, and of course it's a matrix multiplication that you operate all your different features on. And he said, okay, so the, the naive approach will be to concatenate them, the adjacency matrix and the feature matrix, and feed this matrix, and here we have them, we have here at first the link information, then we have the feature information of all the nodes, we feed them into a fully connected neural network. That's it, no? This, this is the way it should be done and why, why do we care about and why do we have to develop another model? And he gives us a very nice idea about the problems he encountered. He says there's a huge number of parameters in the order of n, if n is the number of our nodes, and we have to retrain everything if the graph changes. If even a single node emerges, or if even a, a single link is established or re-established or discovered, everything changes again. So what he says, no, no way. We need weight sharing. So this was his answer, Thomas Kipf, 2016, I suppose. And this is why CNNs on graphs, or graph convolutional networks, GCNs, emerged. And I think this is so easy and this is so nice. And sometimes if you have a problem, like I had a problem to understand why GCNs emerged, what was the, why did it happen? You can find it so easily if you go back to the original authors, to the original people involved at that time, and if you read their documentation or if you read their work. Now here on the right hand side, I have now his work in the revision four from February, 2017, and it's called 
semi-supervised classification with graph convolutional networks from Thomas Kipf and Max Welling. And now here, he states we motivate the choice of our convolutional architecture and our model that he develops in this paper scales linear in the number of graph edges, which is fantastic, and learns hidden layer representations. And this is the main part. It learns the hidden layer representations of a stack, of a stack that encodes both the local graph structure and the feature of the nodes. So this is the most important sentence in all of this. You have an encoding of the local graph structure of all your links and all the features you can include in the node. And combining both information now within a neural network that learns a hidden layer representation, you can find now a semi-supervised semi -supervised classification. And this is so great, and I would like to show you if you follow his presentation, yes, a little bit. We need a little bit of notification. We need to, to understand a little bit what's going on in his model before we make a deep dive into it. And I want to just show you the definitions. It is also here from Thomas Kipf, September 30, 2016. And it is, uh, I'll leave the link for you, of course in the description of this video and it gives the definitions and let's start with the definitions and the first we have a feature matrix as we know within the nodes of our network of our graph we have some feature information and a feature description x for every node i and of course we have the graph structure encoded and this is our typical adjacency matrix this has, of course, a matrix form, and what we are. This is the, these are the two input parameters. Then we have our GCN, and what does it produce? What's coming out of our trained network? It produces a node level output Z, and Z is uh, is an n times f feature matrix where f is the number of output features per node, and n is here the number of nodes. And D is the number of input features. So you can say now, if this is input and this is the expected output, we can now write that every neural network layer can be written as a nonlinear function because something changes if we pass from one layer to the other. And we say here that H is, of course, here our feature matrix X right at the beginning h0 is equivalent to x and the layer after passing a number of layers h will become z where z as we will see is our output that we're looking for our node level output z a feature matrix and how does it happen well you can define a function f whatever the function is and it will depend here on H at a certain layer L with, of course, our adjacency of matrix with the information of the network configuration of the graph structure stored within our adjacency matrix A. And now what they found here for this function F that we're looking for, they had some tricks and they had some limitations to overcome. But in their paper, and this is the paper on the right side, that they found that the function f here for a specific layer dependent on the adjacency matrix, this is the structure of the function they found. We don't want to go into the details, but this is really, really nice. So this is where it came. This is where it originated. At a conclusion, he draw uh, playing around with a three-layer GCN model that managed to separate the communities was very, very impressive at this time. But if we have a more close up look, we can see here. If you now jump to his publication, you find it on archive. I leave you the link below in the description. 
that his model draw on inspirations from both the field of graph-based semi-supervised learning and from recent work on neural networks that operate on graphs. And he has here two. He has the graph-based semi-supervised learning, and he has a form of an explicit graph Laplacian regularization, and the other one was graph embedding-based approaches. And he mentions, and remember, we in the year 2016, we have here our model of deep walk, which learns embeddings via the prediction of local neighborhood of nodes sampled from random walks on the graph. And then he comes to node to vec, which extends deep walk with more sophisticated random walk or breath first search seams. And the other inspiration uh, he notes is that the neural networks that operate on graphs had a form of recurrent neural networks. And I don't want to go into the details because all of this happened in 2016, but he builds upon this and I would like to show you, I would like to show you here. Yeah. The Weisfeldner Lehmann algorithm is a little bit too complicated for the moment, but this this is the task more or less he was uh, facing we had a semi-supervised classification on graphs and the setting was we had graph we had some nodes are uh, labeled with a black circle so this means you see here the red community the blue community the pink community and the green community and some of those nodes in the community are labeled and other nodes are unlabeled indicated by a black circle now, the task was to predict the node label of the other unlabeled nodes. And he said, okay, there's a standard approach. This is the regularization approach, which assumes, and this is the important sentences, that connected nodes are likely to share the same label. So if you have here a labeled with a black circle node, then you can suppose that the right next one might also be uh, with a feature that corresponds to this black circle. And so we go on. The, the further you go away, the further a different community influence will become the dominant force in your system. And then he says, but there's also an embedding, embedding based approach, as I already showed you here and in his publication, where I mentioned deep walk, I mentioned node to vec, where it says we get an embedding for every node. And then we train the classifier on the node embedding. And he mentions the problem that emerges from this, which led to the development of his system, that embeddings are not optimized for classification. And the idea was to drain a graph-based classifier end-to-end -end using the GCN and evaluate the loss on the labeled nodes only. And there's some video, you, I leave you the link, you can then see the results that's, where is it, the results here, that with his methodology, the GCN, so this paper on the right-hand side, let's say for the Quora example, for the Quora data set, he achieved 81, whatever it is. And if you compare it with the different deep walk or whatever methodology, you can see this was in the 2016, 2017, this was quite impressive results. So, what happened was that, yeah, now I want to show you this, where is it? Here yeah, in his original paper, on this schematic uh, visualization, you have your graph convolutional network here, this new approach in 2016, and you get then uh, your output. This is what we are looking for. This is why we do all of this exercise, where you say here, this is a TSNE, now you would maybe have another cluster algorithm where you see the visualization of the hidden layer activations of a two-layer GCN trained on the Quora data set, for example, using 5% of the labels, and the colors denote the document class. Whatever the class is, let's say physics, mathematics, whatever, I don't remember exactly, but whatever the class is, taking the hidden layer activations of this two-layer GCN that has been trained reveals finally what we have been looking for namely 
is semi-supervised, some of the nodes we do know, which category they belong to. And then we have here our node classification task performed exactly in the way we were looking for. And here in, on the left side, you have here the same result, of course, taken from his paper. You have the embedding of the hidden layer activations. So it is for us now a very familiar picture. The hidden layer activations are the crucial part of information to understand our final output matrix. Of course, in the year 2017, there were other applications and one of them was also interest in knowledge graph, but knowledge graph will be the topic of an upcoming video. This is it for today. I just wanted to show you how interesting it can be if you are not familiar, if I thought, hey, why GCN? How does it happen? And then if you go back in time and you look at the papers of this person doing all the work and publish these results and you find exactly what you thought, hey, why not go this way that they follow this way and they came up with a very simple solution that the problem is the retraining of the graph, the number of the parameters, so maybe some memory limitations. We will talk a little bit later on, but this clearly shows you trying to understand the origin of something and why it happened can be so, so fascinating a story, a path following. And then we know we needed weight sharing, graph convolution on networks, encoded the information from a local graph structure, it encoded all the feature of the nodes, and for the task of a semi-supervised classification, for example, on the Cora data set, we achieved our node prediction output. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.